It's day two of BlizzCon and we got a closer look at the next year for Overwatch 2. Hey guys, I'm Dimzis from the Omnic Post. As you can tell, I am still at BlizzCon and after yesterday's announcement and a deep dive into MAGA, Team 4 took the time today to take a closer look at everything that is to come for Overwatch 2. Now, there was a lot, so much so that I have to kind of cut this up in two videos. I am making a separate video on all of the competitive changes that they're going to do in the next few months because there's quite a lot. So in this video, I'm going to focus on all the other changes, which are just as important. But there were also a few things missing that I had hoped they would be talking about and they didn't. Now, surprisingly, enough it was Walter Kong that took the stage at the start and if you don't know who that is he is actually the manager of everything that is tied into the Overwatch IP he is the franchise manager and Overwatch 2 is a part of that now we usually don't get to see Walter as much so it was kind of surprising to see him at the start of this panel now I don't think that is a coincidence I do think that they were trying to send us a message and that he wanted to show his confidence in the future of Overwatch and that everybody is behind the game but anyways he quickly passed the microphone to Aaron and a few people in team 4 now the first thing they talked about is the new upcoming game mode called Clash which should be coming somewhere uh, in the next year Clash in a way rose from the ashes of 2CP or Assault because while that mode had its issues it also had a lot of fans including some people in the team so over the years they have been trying to fix all of the issues with that mode but it never seemed to pan out so they came up with this new mode well it's not really a new mode it's more of a, an old idea that they dug up again Clash is actually based on an old idea of 5CP that they had originally envisioned for Voskaya. It had a different name back in the day, and that time was even during Project Titan, so in 2010. Now, contrary to that story, it's not going to be Voskaya that gets to be the first map for Clash, but Hanamura, because Hanamura is a community and a team favorite. Now, they just didn't want to hack into Hanamura for this new mode, especially because this map has so much history to it and so much lower. So they chose the street right next to Hanamura, Hanuaka. And this new section also is tied into the Shimada clan, but there will also be some hints towards Kiriko and her friend. Now the fun thing is that you can see Hanamura and probably Kanazeka from that new map. Now the way that mode works is that you have five capture points that are positioned linearly in a map that is mirrored. The central point on that map is neutral and the other four, two by two, are owned by the two teams. So two for the red team and two for the blue. Now the first objective for both those teams is getting that center point. Whoever captures that central point will have to start fighting for the first enemy point. Now in theory, if you manage to capture all of those points, you are the winner. But according to Aaron, that is a very rare case. It usually becomes this back and forth where you keep pushing each other's points. So in that case, for every point you capture, you get a point on your score. And the first team to hit the maximum score, which is still undefined, will win the match. It sounds interesting. It sounds like fun. But according to the team, it's also the sweatiest mode that they have ever made. So yeah, some keyboards are going to get crushed. And like I said at the start, we don't have an exact date. This is going to happen somewhere in 2024. Hey guys, allow me to take a second to thank my patrons for their support. You guys are legends. And you too can join the Omnic Post family over on patreon.com slash the Omnic Post. Get early access to content, get Patreon exclusive streams, and even physical goodies. I'm telling you, it's worth it. Anyways, let's continue. Next up, PvE. They told us they have a lot of PvE content in the works, but they are not ready to share all of it. The only thing that they could share is that they're going to add some more masteries to the game. We're getting five new ones. Diva, Echo, Genji, Lucio, and Mei. Now, as they add these new masteries, all of the leaderboards are going to be reset. On top of that, they're also adding something called Masteries Gauntlet, which is a tower defense mode for three players set within the master. I really like that they're expanding on these masteries. Some people are having a ton of fun with it. And especially for new players, that is a handy tool to have. But when it comes to PvE, that was not what we were looking for, sadly. On the other hand, we did get a first look at some of the heroes that will be coming after MAGA. So there's going to be three heroes in 2024, and the season 14 hero is going to be another tank. That's about all we know. Season 12 is that new Space Ranger, a support that seems to hail from Mars. I didn't even know there was a colony on Mars, but there you go. And according to the team, she has a lot of verticality and mobility. So that means that we're getting a flying support. Good thing we have MAGA. Take care of them. Miss Iron Man. Actually sounds cool. By the way, I learned in an interview I just did with uh, some people on the team, including Alec Dawson, that at some point they had this idea for MAGA that he could crit damage any hero that was above the floor. And from what I understood, he actually had an ability that lifted some heroes off the floor, after which he could crit them. But that was a little hard to pull off, especially for console players. So they scrapped the idea. But they were kind of fond of the idea. So maybe one day, 
we'll see something like that. And then there's the season 10 hero, of Venture. They are a Canadian archaeologist that uses the drill to both shoot with these explosive rounds, but also burrow under the ground. And they can fast travel under the ground and cannot be shot. They cannot get any damage while they're under the floor. Now, in that interview I was talking about earlier, I also learned that that burrow ability does do damage. So that's going to be interesting. But that was about everything that they wanted to share. I tried. They weren't up for it. Now, at the end of that panel, Walter came back on stage and he dropped kind of a... A bit of a bomb. And I mean that in a good sense. He wanted to show that their plans with the battle pass are really going to be different. That they're working on better systems in general. And he gave the one example for the battle pass in which you could pick any mythic skin at the end of a battle pass. This is the way they want to give agency to the players about the rewards they get out of the battle pass and out of the game in general because that is really a big focus for them. Now that being said, that feature is kind of awesome. If you miss the Cyber Demon skin back in season one, you'll get a chance to pick it up again. But I guess that the people that have been keeping up with all the battle passes since the start are not going to get a lot of use out of that. But we'll see what else they come up with. They are going to be talking more about that early 2024. But other than the competitive changes that I'll be discussing in the next video, that was about it. There was also a teaser, a little Easter egg in all of the slides that showed the Peruvian map, so I guess that is coming. I thought Iyari had destroyed it all, but turns out she didn't. Well, we'll see. But we did not get any extra info on the Roadhog rework, where it should be coming pretty soon. The other events that we can expect for Season 7 or the other content for Season 8, I guess that is a topic that they'll be discussing in the next few weeks after they uh, recuperated from BlizzCon. Now, overall, it was a good panel. I just expected them to talk about different things. But in a way, you can tell that they found their footing again. It's just going to take some time to start rolling hard again. I think they are currently in a phase where they're listening and adjusting as much as they can as fast as possible. The good thing is that we won't have to wait till the next BlizzCon to get the big updates. I'm pretty sure they're already working on the next big announcement. But tell me, what do you think about this new Clash mode and all of the other stuff that they announced? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and join me during my streams. Take care of yourself, take care of each other. Bye-bye.